Hello again. Yes, now this November, 21 years ago, Cream played their farewell concert at London's Albert Hall. In the two years that the band, comprising Jack Bruce, Eric Clapton and Ginger Baker, was together, it sold more albums than copies of the Bible were sold in the 24 years before that final concert. Most of you will be familiar with Eric Clapton's progress since the breakup of Cream. Tonight, having me in the studio, co-founder, bassist and lead singer Jack Bruce and the man who wrote most of the hits, Pete Brown. Welcome, gentlemen. Lyrics to the hits, yes. Lyrics, lyrics to the hits. Yes. Um, now we're, oh, just, we're, just, we're just going to dwell on cream just for a little bit, just, well, just for a start, right? Because a lot, well, of, a lot well, of people want to. do. But retrospectively now, looking back at cream, what, what was it that made cream sort of like the first super group? Um, first super group? Well, I think that was a name that was coined after uh, things happened. I think what there was was the first band that were, consisted of musicians who were musicians and not pop stars and just wanted to play. With a great um, writer. With well. a great writer, a great lyricist. He lyricist. wanted to play with me. You know, because <laughs> I wrote the music, he wrote the words. Yeah, right. Right. So I think what happened, yeah, was that. that it, 1967 was really when that band uh, happened. And, and we went, I think when it happened was in San Francisco, the famous hippie summer. Everybody was very open for some kind of a, a band, an improvising band. And I think the secret of that band was that we improvised and uh, people really enjoyed that kind of thing. Do you think it's something that could ever be repeated? Yeah, I do all, I do all the time. I, you know, that's what I do um, every night of my life, whenever I can, I, I repeat it. What, you just get the old albums out and listen to them? No, I mean with my bands. I, you know, I do gigs. Yeah. Uh, improvising. But do you think, do you think you've got the same, the same sort of magic? Are you feeling the same sort of need that Cream fulfills? Different felt? kinds of magic. If you work with different people, then you get different kinds of magic. That particular band had those three people in it, and uh, yeah. another band with different people in it has a different kind of magic. So, I mean, so you know, you, 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 you sort of like left Cream well behind. I mean, obviously, you know, 21 years ago, etc. But is it something that you know you, you find? You, I mean, obviously, I just referred to it, but does everyone always refer to it when they're speaking? To yeah, you? they do. But I mean, it's it's fine. Uh, it's it's a very important band, apparently. A nice little mm. trio that that uh, <laughs> people liked, Just the um, pieces. and I think the yeah, I think the only jazz band that ever got to like number one in the pop charts and sold brilliance of, of records. Well, also the other thing was that we did, I think because we came from the backgrounds that we came from, like I came from poetry and Jack came from jazz and things. Glasgow actually. And Glasgow, <laughs> jazz, Jazzgow, <laughs> and um, and uh, we did fairly consciously try to write things that, that weren't just throwaways. We, we tried, conscious. well, unconsciously tried to write things that were conscious, things that would live on, we hoped, because we were interested in posterity. Well, how's, <laughs> you, you, two, you, oh two, you, two, you two have stuck together for the, over the 21 <laughs> years, haven't you? Together yes. now. They're actually, they're, joined, they're joined, 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 joined at the waist. But how, how, you know, what is it? How come you stuck together for so long? Um, um, I don't know, no one else. He saved my life. No one else calls um, me. <laughs> <laughs> I, nobody else calls me. He saved my life. Um, no, we do. I mean, uh, for me, it's still, and I say this. Hello, I've just got that one. I say this. This is good. Nobody else calls me. <laughs> I say this. <laughs> slow tonight. I, I say this advisedly. Um, advisedly? <laughs> no, I mean, I, actually, I, I do say this, and that is that I'm, I'm, I'm still feel very privileged to work with a musician of Jack's calibre. Statue, is it? Like <laughs> statue, isn't it? Jack's statue. Um, yeah. I shouldn't say calibre because that's advertised. Calibre. Has, has the material that, that, you know, in terms of your lyrics, how's the, yeah, I know it's a very fine nice silk suit we've got nice Jack. Nice piece of schmatter. This has got a very dinky pair of shoes on here. Five dollars, 99 cents, uh, Chinatown, Chinatown. You look like you're <laughs> going to jump out and do Chinatown. some Tai Chi on a minute. Would you like me to? I can, I can. No, no, I don't, no, we might lose your no, microphone. No, I mean, you know, seriously, we, we, uh, we, no, we work together very well. I mean, one of the songs that I'm hoping to do later, I think is a good example of how we work. Uh, Pete had a set of lyrics, and I, I'd written a, a piece of music, and we hadn't been together for a long time. I was on the road in the States, and then we met up, and he gave me these lyrics, and they actually fitted uh, the, the music totally. But when you hit, listen to the music, it's not like a very simple piece of music. It's quite... Mm quite a complicated thing mm -hmm. so another thing about him is that he he does tend to kind of foretell the future of my my life he kind of writes like you will hurt your foot next month In you know and i sing oh, i will hurt my foot <laughs> next month and i do you know <laughs> so it's, that's bizarre now, there's a bit of telepathy i mean uh, which just happens 
I don't know. It's just well, because... We spend enough time together, I'm sure. Because, well, we you know, don't. I mean, that's the only thing. No, we don't. We don't. I mean, we, we get together when we can. But obviously, like, because I do a lot of different things and Jack does a lot of different things, Jack's on the road you a know, lot. You know, we write over the phone a lot as well. Yeah, we, we do, you know, yeah. We, we write things over the phone. It costs do. a lot of money. And, and then, you know, <laughs> we have to sell records in order to pay the phone <laughs> bill, to be quite honest. <laughs> and buy the seats. Oh, yes. no, no, this, this was a gift from the Miles Davis band. Right, yeah. It's fabulous. They all saved up. Fabulous. And this is second hand. You've, you've just played a 30-day UK-US <laughs> tour, haven't you? Now, I did. You wouldn't necessarily be able to or sell out a tour like that over here in the UK, would you? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I've, I have played uh, some concerts. I, d I used to have a kind of... I used to do the Edinburgh Festival mm. every year because it happens once a year. So I did it every year for about four or five years. Uh, but I didn't do it last year. But do you? Th I mean, so I could sell out the the Edinburgh Festival once but would a year. You, yeah, the Edinburgh Festival, not, not <laughs> <laughs> massive venues. But would no, you say that no. you know the no, audience? No, nobody. I mean, I think this country is um, is is difficult for people like me. Um, it's the, what, quite what rightly it? this country is very fashion trend conscious, and that's why the important new things that that happen quite often, maybe almost always, come from this country. Uh, so do you, but the it does make it very fickle. They're very fickle, which is good. I mean, I'm all for that. I think it's great. I mean, I've got a couple of kids who are, who are great, uh, great musicians. Um, yeah, Matt, your son's playing with Ginger Baker's son or something, isn't he? Yes, yes. Uh, so, so what I'm saying is that for, for them, you know, that kind of thing is very good. And mm. This country has that, which no other country has. And it, it makes it very difficult for oldsters like me to, which I don't mind. I don't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind that because I think it's important. There's got to be... Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there. Talking of, talking of Ginger briefly, where is he? What's, where, what's he's, happening? Uh, at the moment, he's in Los Angeles, I believe. Somebody told me he was doing, he was like portraying a, a kind of killer or something in some movie, I which is fan, absolutely up his street. I heard he found himself on a farm or something. I mean, oh no, he does. He has an olive grove in, in Italy. Italy. Yeah. I mean, the last time I saw him, I played a festival in Nice, and he, he was going around like. Kicking trees and saying, what a rotten olive olive tree. Nah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know. So he's got his he's got his he's got some yeah. olive trees, you know. Well you've got this retrospective album coming out in the new year. But right. why why have you picked why, why now? Why have you decided to bring it out now? Well I didn't. Uh, I didn't they uh, the record company is a guy called Bill Levinson, to be serious about it. It's a great guy because yeah, sure. major record companies are, at the moment are full of terrible people who are not interested in music. Uh, yeah. and only interested in, in making money in whatever scandalous way they will. Yeah. But there are one or two people who do believe that this is a tradition that we're involved in yeah. and that rock and roll music is yeah. something that is worthwhile. So there's a guy called Bill Levinson, he's a good bloke, and he was responsible for Eric Clapton's boxed set, boxed set. <laughs> <laughs> boxed terrible. life. Yeah, yeah, his boxed life, which yeah. would like 400,000 things so I get I've, we've got 17 tracks he's he found things that I thought were lost there's three tracks which I thought would last forever which I think are among the, the best things I've recorded mm -hmm. he found them and re-recorded them digitally you know transferred them digitally to lose a lot of the noise and so on and he's he's, he's just a, a music lover and a good bloke who happens to have a little bit of power at the moment. And um, old, I take um, my hat off to him. Old, um, well, good old Bill. Hats yeah. off to Bill. But um, Eric, you've been Eric Clapton's playing on a couple of tracks, isn't he? He is. Yeah, he plays on on the the first track and the last track. Do you keep in touch with him? You know, do you see him quite often? Uh, he did. He came and sat in uh, with me. Uh, stood, he was standing up at the time at the standing bottom line. The, the bottom there. line. It's I mean, terrible. In New York, right, yeah. yeah, it was a lovely concert, and he came. I was I was amazed. He there he was. He turned up. He played great. Uh, he really did. And a uh, funny, little quick funny story about that is that, that n nobody expected it. So nobody had a, a cassette to put in the, to record it. So, mm -hmm. so nobody recorded it. So there was a guy who had bootlegged it, bo bootlegged it, this like kid who had bootlegged it. And we're all kind of going around saying, well, you know, I'll give you a hundred dollars, you know. <laughs> and like this guy became a celebrity, you know, and everything. Which is, <laughs> it's really where it's at. You know, I like what the Grateful Dead do. They have... Mm -hmm. um, sockets that everybody can go out to the concert and just plug in your tape recorder, yeah. you know, which is good. You know, it should be like that. Yeah. You get a good sound, you know. Yeah. So um, we, we had to actually buy this from this, this geezer, you know. Well, I, th I think it's also nice that the album's coming out when it does because uh, it, I think it is a form of recognition, finally, for, for some of the, the things that we have achieved in the past uh, million years of, of working together. And mm. it's done in the shape 
you know, to follow up Eric's thing, which was also meant to do the same thing. It's the same series. It's quite obviously the same kind of packaging, which is nice. You but know. one final question. We deserve it. One final question. Oh, no, we've let, got, we got Pete Brown, we've got Jack Breeze, we've got Eric Clapton. Ginger's up his olive groves, but yeah. Hawkwind have done it, Smokey are doing it. Could Cream reform? They could. And will they? I don't know. Is there talk? <laughs> There's always talk. Marvellous. We'll let the talk continue. Thanks very much, Pete and Jack. Jack's going to stick around after the break when you can hear him play a couple of acoustic numbers. That's just two minutes away from now.